personal appearance, and character traits. Perhaps the most striking and often noted thing about Johnny's personal appearance is the intensity and brilliance of his eyes. People would remark that his keen black eyes sparkled with a peculiar brightness. There was something inescapably moving about his powerful gaze. He had extraordinarily brilliant eyes, dark and piercing. He would launch into a sermon based on something he read in Swedenborg, and with black eyes blazing, especially when he spoke about the wonders of nature and how they revealed the glory of God, his eyes would become fiery. Eyes blazing, Johnny Appleseed would show you how to see the divine in nature. His voice, too, commanded attention. An elderly woman recalls the effect that Johnny's words had on her, even as a child. I saw him once at the table, when I was very small, telling about some apples that were new to us. His description was poetical, the language remarkably well chosen. It could have been no finer had the whole of Webster's unabridged, with all its royal vocabulary, been fresh upon his ready tongue. I stood back at Mother's chair, amazed, delighted, bewildered, and vaguely realizing the wonderful powers of true oratory. Johnny's true oratory was without pretentiousness or pride. His diction was pure and chaste, and his language simple but grammatical. He would at times burst into a startling inspiration of eloquence, complete and consummate, exalted, beautiful. As a result, he penetrated his auditors, apparently without intending to do so, and moved them without knowing it. These same sources describe Johnny as being an exceedingly vigorous soul, packed full of Yankee energy and full of restless activity. The vital force burned so brightly in him that it is said that he crossed Lake Erie on the ice, barefooted. While others who attempted to do the same thing froze to death. He could do the work of two men, walk thousands of miles on foot, and plant apple trees over a hundred thousand square miles of territory. And yet he is also described as fond of ease, someone who could enjoy simply laying in the shade of a spreading tree or dozing off in the midst of the most dangerous circumstances.